Hi YouTube friends. Welcome back to another edition of Brandon's Bees. So what does a beekeeper do during the winter time? Especially a beekeeper whose bees are, are gone and he doesn't have to worry about them right now until next season, until he gets new bees. Well, he becomes a woodworker. <laughs> I am not a woodworker. I took wood shop in seventh grade. I still remember a few things and I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos which is how I learned to be a beekeeper. So a year ago I wasn't a beekeeper either but I am now. Thought I would try to make some cutting boards for family members for Christmas. The one problem I'm running into is I do not have a planer or a jointer. So my edges and my surfaces are not perfectly square as they could be. So I'm working through it as best I can. I have a lot of sanders and I have a table saw. I have a router and a router table. This is a miter saw, but uh, I'm going to use it for cross cutting. So this is cherry. This is black walnut. This is maple. I've got a piece of zebra wood and I also have a piece of purple heart. I'm going to cut those into smaller pieces so I can use them as much as I can. I can get as much use as I can out of those two pieces of wood. Cherry is my most plentiful. I've ripped these down to about an inch and five eighths. Maple is my second most plentiful. Then I have a little bit of uh, black walnut. So black walnut I've got here ripped down to about an inch and five eighths. These, these are perfect right now, the maples. The cherries I have to rip down a little more. Uh, and I'm going to do that right now. The uh, black walnut, I did one. And I'm going to finish that one. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to square them up on my table saw here. This table saw, it's not the best one they make. It's just a Craftsman. Actually, my dad gave it to me. And for Christmas, my wife gave me a shop vac because I told her I was going to be doing all this work in, in the wood shop. And so she thought that her garage should be cleaner. So I got an Chris, early Christmas present with the shop vac. So far, I've used it twice and it's worked out really good. Let's get started, see what we can do with this stuff. If I hadn't been wearing gloves, that's what had been happening to my finger just now because I was careless. So, luckily, that's my glove and not my finger <laughs> ripped open. Be careful around saws. My cherry and my maple are now all ripped down. I got black walnut here. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to rip it to the inch and five eighths, but then I'm also going to cut it in half because I want to use more of this as accent pieces in the cutting boards. So I want to make the pieces smaller, but still wide enough to fit in with all the rest of them. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the purple heart and the zebra wood. So I'm going to rip them into the inch and five eighths first, and then I'm going to cut them down into smaller pieces that I can use as accent pieces in the cutting boards. Because they're the more expensive woods, I want to get as much use out of them as I can in the different cutting boards I'm planning on making. A big knot right here, so I'm going to use the other side. I went to my uh, hardwood store for the zebra wood. The zebra wood they were charging $15.95 a bench foot, which means 12 by 12 inches by one inch thick. Because this is two inches thick, I was paying $32 linear foot. So, this is a $64 piece of wood. What I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to rip it down to the, an inch and five eighths. Then I'm going to cut it into smaller, uh, cut it into smaller width, so I can still use it in my um, cutting boards at an inch and five eighths wide. But uh, the thickness will be smaller, so I'll get more of the decorative pieces of the cedar wood spread throughout. I'll just show you how pretty this wood is. It's got zebra stripe. 
through the whole thing, even on the end grains. And you can see how big around this tree was. I mean, this is not even close to the center. And um, still has this really nice grain through the whole thing. So that's why I assume it's so expensive and um, why I'm gonna try to get as much use out of it as I can. So again, because this is a quarter, that's an $8 a bench foot, $16 a linear foot. This is three feet. Four feet eight. Super hot and heavy. This is the heaviest piece. <laughs> So what we've done, these are a bunch of scrap pieces left over from the 25 inch ones that I cut. I'm going to use this as a test for the other ones I'm going to make. I'm going to keep this one for myself. So I had my wife come out, she picked the color she liked. So walnut on the outside, then maple, then purple heart, and then a maple stripe in the middle. So what you didn't see was I sanded all these down so that the joints here where they're going to fit together are all as smooth as I can get them with a sander. Um, again, I don't have a planer or a jointer, so I think I did pretty good with the sander. I have my clamps here. I have a lot of clamps. And I also have Delaney here helping me. <laughs> so you can never have two, you can never have enough clamps. Did you know that? Good. So I'm going to lay my clamps out first, and then we're going to put our wood on top, because I want to keep it as level as possible. And here's Shane. Say hello to the camera. Hello. Children, children, no fighting. Hard. No fighting for YouTube. Hey, Hard. that's, now I've got evidence for your trial. Here. Okay, quiet. I'm the star of this show. Good job. This is Gorilla Wood Glue. 
for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. I'm not a sponsor. That means they haven't paid me to, for me to use this. They should though. It's a free commercial. Open the wall. <coughs> yes, it is. Do you want to start brushing it in with that red brush? Yeah. Just cover the whole piece of wood. Okay, where are these gloves? Yeah. Thanks. Now we'll turn these, stick them together. Okay, this one's wet. Why is there duct tape right here? Turn them off. sand this down on both sides so all these boards are level. I'm also getting sick so I may sound different. I may look different but maybe not too much. Um, so <coughs> luckily I can do this kind of stuff while I'm sick. So let's get started on this. Also have this very coarse 36 grain uh, belt for my belt sander. I'm just going to use this to take down the rough edges, and I'm going to use my rotary sander with 8 grit to smooth it out. And then we'll get down. I'll go down to 120 on that as well. to my rotary orbit sander, 80 grit paper. All right. So as you can see, I share my workshop with the garage and the laundry and all my other stuff. So, we have to make room for others in our lives. Can't, no man is an island. Got this as smooth and even by hand as I possibly can for my amateur skill level. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a half inch off of each side so that the ends are square. If I was gonna make a long grain cutting board, I'd be pretty much done. That's the easy way to do it, and if I was smart, that's the way I would do it. But I'm not smart. In fact, I'm the opposite of smart. I'm reckless. Because this is kind of a practice one, what I'm doing is I'm going to make an end grain cutting board. So, my wife says she would like about an inch and a half thickness. So I'm going to cut these ends off, then I'm going to cross cut it down to about an inch and a half, hmm, maybe a little more for sanding and I should be able to get quite a few boards out of this to be able to make an end grain cutting board. Once I get those cross cuts cut, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put them together and 
a random order that I like. And I'm sure they're not going to fit together perfectly, so I'm going to have to sand them again on the edges to make sure they glue together as tightly as possible. So let's do some cross cutting. Cross cutting is dangerous because you're going across the grain. I really should have a cross cut sled, but I do not. see where the fibers bonded together but it broke apart for some reason so I'm going to glue these back together and um, go from there. This is the final product. I was able to glue all the pieces together. I was able to sand it down to about 220. I did a quarter round over on the edges and I also did a couple of straight cuts for handles there on the bottom. These are just temporary feet that I put on just to see how it is. I've got some um, screw on rubber pads coming in from Amazon in a couple of days and I'll put those on. So I oiled it, mineral oil, and <coughs> excuse me. Uh, once the mineral oil soaked in, it raised up some of the grain. Um, the grain became saturated on the end grains, and so now I'm going to sand it down again, um, just to make it super, super smooth. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it for a first attempt. The lines aren't as straight as I would have liked. Um, obviously, these aren't, but they were supposed to be like that. But these lines should have been straight. Again, I said before, I don't have a planer. So I think it turned out all right. There aren't any gaps as far as uh, for food to get into or anything like that. So that's good. So I'm gonna sand it at 120 with the belt sander. Then I'm gonna finish it off at 220 with the orbital sander. Um, I'm gonna re-oil it and I think it's pretty much done. So for our first attempt at woodworking in a long time, this is the way it started out. So I think it's a fairly good final result. As you can see, I had to cut some of these off on the ends to make it even and square. But I like it. I don't think I'm going to do any ingrained cutting boards for a while now. Um, I think I'm going to stick with some of the long grain stuff. I kind of like the way it works better. And I have a few more cutting boards that I need to make for um, Christmas gifts. The long grain goes a lot quicker too. It sands better and the lines line up easier. So I have some ideas on what I want to do with the rest of the wood. I remembered why I wear air protection because that is loud. So that's kind of smoothed it up from where the oil raised up the grain. So let's finish it off at 220. It is glassy, glassy smooth.
but because this is end grain it'll soak in to the fibers of the wood just like water moves up in the wood when it's on the tree so I put a healthy amount of oil all over the whole thing and I just kind of let it soak in and I'll come back half hour 45 minutes see if it's all soaked in all right so it's been about 45 minutes I went inside, took a shower, shaved, um, came back out, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's absorbed in here, and it's absorbed in over here, over here, a few places where it hasn't completely absorbed in, but <clears throat> I'd say that's pretty good for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off the remaining oil, and I think we're probably pretty good to go. Again, I was pretty pleased with the way this turned out, better than I imagined it would be. And um, for a first attempt at an ingrain cutting board, I think that's just pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of places where I think it could be better, uh, especially in the way the lines line up. I might have chosen different woods. The purple heart is here. This is black maple. And unless you're right up on it, it's kind of hard to see the difference. So I might have tried a different wood. This is, uh, I mean, the, yeah, black walnut, purple heart, and this is maple here. So, uh, but overall, I'm glad I did it. We'll get a lot of use out of this. Again, this is gonna be mine. We're gonna use it here at the house. Uh, the ones I'm gonna give away as gifts. I'm not gonna spend quite as much time on. Overall, this probably took me, I, I wanna say between 15 and 20 hours to make overall over a space of three to four days. Today's the fourth day, I believe. And that's without the, you know, tools that would help like a planer and a jointer. Uh, yeah, there's just table saw and sanders and that's it. So again, if you made it this far with me, thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't know what else I'll post, uh, you know, that has to do with um, bees until next year, but um, I'm going to be doing more of these for Christmas and then, you know, anything else. So um, stay tuned. And um, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate everything. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave those and um, I'll, I'll try to respond as best I can. Unless they're just horrible comments <laughs> and I won't bother. But again, thanks again. I appreciate everything everybody's done for me. So um, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.